So you want to be an expert in photobiomodulation? Well, like most things, the best place to start is with the basic definition. Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to go over the definition of photobiomodulation and low-level light therapy. So let's jump right into it, and this is one of the most widely accepted definitions. Photobiomodulation therapy is a form of light therapy that utilizes non-ionizing forms of light sources, including lasers, LEDs, and broadband light, in the visible and infrared spectrum. It is a non-thermal process involving endogenous chromophores eliciting photophysical, i.e. linear and non-linear, and photochemical events at various biological scales. This process results in beneficial therapeutic outcomes, including, but not limited to, the alleviation of pain or inflammation, immunomodulation, and the promotion of wound healing and tissue regeneration. And they're giving credit to Dr. Anders. It is now agreed that PBM therapy is a more accurate and specific term for the therapeutic application of low level light compared with LLLT. So there we have it. You can use a wide range of wavelengths and colors from blue to green to yellow to red to infrared. And those wavelengths can be delivered by practically any lighting source, an LED, a laser, a broadband source like sunlight or an incandescent bulb. But there's one major condition that we're going to see consistently with all these other definitions is that it's non-thermal. We're not trying to elicit heat as most of the mechanisms are photochemical, as they say. So the same article also tells us the definition of low-level light therapy. Low-level light therapy, LLLT, is defined as treatment using a radiation with light of low power intensity so that the effects are a response to the light and not due to heat. A variety of light sources, especially low-power lasers, are used. And this is coming from the Medical Subject Headings Descriptor Data from 2017. So again, very similar theme that we're using light and not heat, and we're purposely using low-power intensities so we don't cause too much heat. So I wanted to fact check this medical subject headings database, and so I looked up photobiomodulation in this database. So when I searched for photobiomodulation, it came up with low-level light therapy with photobiomodulation as one of the tags. So when we zoom in on this scope note, it does indeed confirm treatment using irradiation with light of low power intensity so that effects are response to light and not due to heat. So it's very important if you want your study to be categorized as LLLT and PBM that you use low intensity that doesn't cause heat. In contrast, if you're using a high intensity that causes heat, then you're no longer doing LLLT or photobiomodulation. So here's a recent 2024 article written solely by Dr. Hamblin. PBMT generally uses red and or near infrared wavelengths of light at an intensity that causes no tissue heating. And its activity is based on well-established biological and cellular mechanisms. So again, the emphasis is not only on being non-thermal and no heating, but making sure the intensity doesn't cause that heat. An excellent article by Dr. Anders, it's free to read, also dives into the definitions even more. The use of this term is key, as it distinguishes photobiomodulation therapy, which is non-thermal, from the popular use of light-based devices for simple heating of tissues, as can be accomplished using near-infrared lamps, or other applications of light that rely on thermal effects for all or part of the mechanisms of action. So it's really important to emphasize, even if you have all or part of your mechanisms are thermal, you're no longer doing PBM. So many people know that Andre Mester discovered photobiomodulation in the 1960s, and this is what one study had to say about it. The first scientific description by Professor Andre Mester about 50 years ago outlined the effects of low-dose laser interaction with tissues, describing the non-thermal therapeutic benefits of biophotonics energy. So this definition has always been the same of being a non-thermal application of various types of lights, starting with lasers and LEDs and different types of sources, but it's always been non-thermal. So a lot of people end up referencing NASA because they studied light therapy in the 90s. In the article by Dr. Whelan, who did a lot of this research for NASA, these diodes can be configured to produce multiple wavelengths, can be arranged in large flat arrays, allowing treatment of large wounds, and produce no heat. So again, even the NASA LED experiments were doing no heat. And a big step for mainstream approval last year was the FDA issued a draft guidance for photobiomodulation device approvals. So in this guidance, they defined the terms of photobiomodulation for what the devices that they would approve. For the purpose of this guidance, 
The term photobiomodulation is defined as the application of light at an irradiance that does not induce heating with the goal of altering biological activity. So again, the emphasis is always on having low intensity, low irradiance that does not induce heating. And they also have another definition in their introduction section. The device is designed to deliver a non-heating dose of light energy into the body to provide clinical benefit to the patient. So again, if devices are being designed with high intensities that are causing heating, then the FDA might not approve it in that PBM category, which may explain why a lot of major brands are FDA registered under a heat lamp category and not under the photobiomodulation category. So we just went over the definitions according to leading researchers that's been established in the medical library, that's established by NASA and established by the FDA, all of which converge and confirm that it's a non-thermal therapy and the focus is on using low intensities in order to produce that effect. And I want to go through a couple more definitions for you so that way we can really round it out and get some more context here. So an awesome review article called Review of Light Parameters and Photobiomodulation e Efficacy, Dive into Complexity. This is free to read. I highly recommend if you want to be an expert to read this article. So in one section they say the photon intensity, i.e. irradiance, must be adequate. Using higher intensity, the photon energy will be transformed into excessive heat in the target tissue. And using low intensity, the photon absorption will be insufficient to achieve the goal. So I think most people understand not having too low of intensity because everyone fear mongered you that if you have too low intensity, you don't get enough penetration, you don't get enough effects, it's going to take you a long time. But the limit to intensity is getting too much heat. And they do repeat this in another section. Similarly, the upper threshold is fixed by the possible photothermal effect if the power density is too large. So again, power density, intensity, and irradiance are kind of interchangeable of, of being that milliwatts per centimeter squared. If the intensity is too large, you get too much heat and you're no longer doing PBM and you're going to start activating the photothermal effects. This comes from a textbook of low level light therapy and photobiomodulation with a lot of the leading researchers, Dr. Hamblin, Farousi, Huang, uh, DeFritis, and Carroll. And this is a free chapter that you can download online for free. This means that temperature, heating of the tissue, will ultimately be a limiting factor when increasing the power as a means of increasing the penetration depth in the tissue. So what they're referring to is that you keep increasing the power or intensity, then you do get better penetration up until the point of causing heating. Once you get heating, you get increased blood flow to that area and the blood will limit penetration. So it's not only important for the basic definitions of PBM and LLT to use low intensities that don't cause heating, but it's also important for things like penetration. And they also say this, however, there is some evidence that the treatment time must be longer than a certain minimum value to produce any benefit. So this has been demonstrated many times that even if you use extremely high intensities, if you recalculate your dose and you do a low exposure time, you might not get the right therapeutic benefits. There's a minimum amount of exposure time that's needed to get the right benefits. Let's look at another definition. Altering cellular function using low level non-thermal LED light is called photobiomodulation or low level light therapy. Let's jump to another one. This is an excellent review article. Again, that's free to read. The nuts and bolts of low level laser light therapy. LLLT is known as cold laser therapy as the power densities used are lower than those needed to produce heating of tissue. Here's another one. LLLT has been defined as treatment with a dose rate that causes no immediate detectable rise in temperature in the tissue being treated and no macroscopically visible changes in tissue structure. So dose rate is a kind of a fancy way of saying intensity. Another excellent review article, free to read, everyone should read it. Photobiomodulation, low level, non-thermal IRA has been shown to successfully stimulate wound healing, promote hair growth, and even alleviate pain and inflammation. This process is referred to as low level light therapy or photobiomodulation. So again, right in the beginning, it's low level and non-thermal. So another article that's free to read, that's very excellent. Everyone should read it if you want to be an expert in light therapy. Using specific low energy, non-thermal light parameters within a window of wavelengths from visible to near infrared, PBM provides an alternative therapy for patients needing faster healing of wounds and or for anti-inflammatory purposes. So I know this has taken a while, but let's just go through a couple more. Here's another article with several authors, including including Dr. Hamblin as a co-author. Low-level laser therapy, sometimes known as low-level light therapy or photobiomodulation, is a low-intensity light therapy. The effect is photochemical. 
not thermal. LLLT is an athermic photochemical modality where red or near infrared light is used to stimulate tissue healing and reduce pain and inflammation. With the word athermic being a fancy way of saying non-thermal or no heat. An article by Dr. Choi says, the beneficial effects of PBM are thought to occur primarily by inducing a photochemical reaction in the cell instead of generating a thermal effect. Another article says, these lasers emit no heat, sound, or vibration. Instead of generating a thermal effect, LLOT acts by inducing a photochemical reaction in the cell, a process referred to as biostimulation or photobiomodulation. This is an important article written by Dr. Hamblin as the only author that gives us a lot of context for what we're talking about. It is interesting to compare the two treatments discussed above, PBM and IR emitting bioceramics, with WIRA. The big difference, of course, is that PBM and bioceramics were designed to produce no detectable heating effect in the tissue. WIRA is very different in that it was originally designed to produce therapeutic tissue heating. Mild hyperthermia, 39 to 43 degrees Celsius, has long been known to be an effective adjuvant in cancer treatment. So it's really important. This WIRA is called water filtered IRA. It uses near infrared wavelengths, but they purposely use a high intensity to cause tissue heating. So they know they're not in the PBM category because PBM is non-thermal, but it's still very therapeutic. So you can do heat therapy and that's very therapeutic, but we know it's no longer PBM. Here's another one. The near infrared delivered through TPBM is absorbed by a mitochondrial enzyme and chromophore, cytochrome C oxidase, and is only minimally dissipated as thermal energy. This is very important to all the other definitions that say it's a photochemical reaction and not a thermal reaction. The photon needs to be absorbed by the mitochondria, by that cytochrome C oxidase to have that PBM effect. If too many photons are being converted into heat, they're not being utilized for that photochemical reaction. Okay, here's my last one and hopefully you're convinced by now. Near infrared lasers have good penetration through the skin and hard soft tissue without heating, hence cold lasers. Making them suitable for pain relief, wound healing, tissue regeneration, and as anti-inflammatory treatments. So thanks for tuning in and hanging in there with me today. Hopefully you can see a common theme with all these different definitions that low-level light therapy and photobiomodulation are non-thermal light therapies. If you want to do true photobiomodulation therapy or true low-level light therapy, then you purposely use low intensities that don't cause significant heating. So thanks for tuning in.